take care of business. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Please stand with me as we place allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with love and justice for all. Thank you. The Board of Adjustment is a nine-member board, and we're appointed by the City Council, and we serve on a voluntary basis without compensation. Our procedure for conducting business is I'll call the name of the petitioner. If you would please come forward, please, please uh, to the mic and speak clearly. Anyone who ha uh, has any questions about that particular item uh, or are interested in knowing any more about that particular item will be given the opportunity to come forward and voice their opinions and concerns and any questions. Once we receive public testimony for that particular item, the members of the board will deliberate and will render our decision this afternoon. I remind the members uh, on the board tonight that have a personal or a financial interest in any particular item, you're required to recuse yourself from voting. Any testimony that is submitted by the petitioner on behalf of, or on the behalf of the petitioner during the presentation of the item will be binding as to any decision the board makes relative to the motion. I remind the members of the board, if a motion is made to deny an item, uh, a reason must be given. We have five members here tonight, Ms. KT Brown, Mr. Bo Holmes, Mr. Corey Johnson, Mr. George Howell, Jr., and I'm John Stanley, your chairman. Our land use staff tonight is Mr. Tommy Tyson, Mr. James Center, and Ms. Tanya Ingram. Okay, we have five here tonight to approve a motion. It requires all five of us to vote for that particular item. So you have to have 100% approval. If you feel as though that might hinder an approval of your item that you plan to present tonight, you may delay and come to the meeting next month at September the 19th. If you want to do that, please see Tanya Ingram. If while we're going through the, uh, the meeting, if you decide to withdraw during the meeting, then you can do that, no problem. But just do it before you come to the podium. Okay, any questions? We normally have, uh, we have a nine member board, it's just tonight, we're, we only have five. Okay, the first item is presented by Mr. John Foshi representing Foshi Design and Construction, LLC, requesting an exception to the SMART code for signings located at 19 and 21 South Court Street in a T5 SMART code zoning district. Mr. Foshi. Good evening. Representing Foshi Design and Construction, requesting uh, to internally light a two blade signs located 19 and 21 South Court John, Street. speak up a little louder, please. That mic, that, that no sound's problem. not coming out right as loud as it should. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, just requesting permission to internally light two blade signs, one located at 19, one located at 21 South Court Street. Okay, board members, so you'll look in your package there, you'll see where the signs are located. Um, so the sign, it, the frame is already mount, mounted. Yes, sir, and the sign itself is glass. Right. And you have an example of how we'd like to light the sign um, on some of the slides and some of the information before you. To be internally lit. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Any questions, board members? You know it's needed. I Anyone, any, any questions, board members? Anyone in the audience care to address this item? I'll entertain a motion. So be it. Have a motion to approve to have a second? Second. Second. Second from Mr. Johnson. Have a motion from Ms. Brown and a second from Mr. Johnson. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Thank, Thank you all very much. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> Item two is presented by Flowers and White Engineering representing Providence Partners, LLC, requesting a rear yard variance for a new dwelling to be located at 7131 Fame Park Drive in a PUD zoning district. Mr. White. 
Good evening. Um, I'm Kenneth White Jr. with Lars White representing Providence Partners LLC. This is a proposed house in a platted lot uh, in Windhurst, uh, right behind near Wind Lakes, the back entrance of Wind Lakes. Um, we're requesting a seven, um, a seven foot variance to the rear setback. This, um, there's quite a bit of relief across this property um, from front to back. It, the garage needed to be extended a little bit to accommodate some stairs in the garage, and I think that's why we needed the variance. So I can entertain any questions. Did you have any? Okay. Any questions, board members? Anyone in the audience care to address this item? I'll entertain a motion. Let's do approve. I have a motion to approve to have a second? Second. Yes. From Mr. Howell. A motion from Mr. Holmes and a second from Mr. Howell. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries. Thank you. Item three is presented by Kenneth Bell, representing Sandra Cabrera, requesting a rear yard variance, a side yard variance, and a coverage variance for an addition to the dwelling located at 2373 Winifred Street in an R60D zoning district. Mr. Bell? Yes, sir. Um, the picture that shows the white spot of the addition that uh, we tore down to remodel because it was real molded and it's an elderly lady stays in it, which is my grandmother. Um, could you speak a little clearer into the mic, please? Yes, sir. Uh, that that room, that particular room, it was existing, and we removed all the rotten boards, the roof, and all, and we want to build it back with a new foundation. But on the side, on the right side of it, showing here, it's on the property line that's owned by the same person. And the back end that we need to go out to 20 foot is the backyard of the same house and we needed a various permit to start it. Wait a minute. You said the backyard of the same house. Yes, it's, it's all in, the, all the property is owned by one person and it's a privacy fence up probably about 50 to 60 feet of back. And when you look it up on this plot here, I don't know if you have this one, I could show you this part right here is her We back. have something similar to that. Yes, sir. So, yes. Tanya, these are three separately platted lots? They are, but they're owned by the same person. Yes. And they may actually come back and replat these lots and join them all together at some point. But this was the easier, cheapest way to go ahead and do what they wanted to do right now. Well, well uh, if they don't plat it as one lot, then you've got a building that's right up next to the rear and the side property line. Right. Correct? Right. And do you understand what that means? Yes, sir. That, what? What does it mean? That the room that, the room that we're bringing will be overextending the city code. Well, what it means is you're jamming the building at the rear property line and side property line with nothing but building. Okay, uh -huh. so if that lot were to sell by itself, where's the water from that building going to go? She won't sell it. Well, we don't know that. <laughs> yes. Now, if we approve it, we can say, okay, you got to replant it as one lot. Right. Okay, then that deals with the issue. Okay. Otherwise, she could sell that lot or sell the other two lots, and then you got a building right on the property line. Then you got water from this building coming off onto, onto both of those lots because the building's right on the property line. Um, well, from this so, property. I'm sorry. I, anyway, I, I got you. <laughs> okay, everybody understand that? Yeah, but during those days, that's the way they built those houses. I looked at it and I didn't see where it was causing the problem because it was the only lot located on those two streets, Winford Street and Hughes Street. Yes. Am, am I right? Uh huh. It was situated so that it won't affect anybody else because the way they are built in that area. Well, it would affect somebody. It doesn't as long as the same property owner owns all three lots. But if she were to sell one, the, the lot corner on the lot, I mean, excuse me, the lot on the corner, or the other lots to some other property owner, then you got a building that's right on the property line with water dumping off on those lots. So I would recommend that if we approve this, we require 
the all three lots oh, okay. be replatted okay. into one lot. Okay. Okay. Any any um, anyone the audits any other questions? Those are good questions. Can you take a vote? No, ma'am, not yet. Anyone in the audits care to address this item? Okay. Any further discussion? I'll entertain a motion. I move that we grant it with the specification that we're given for it to be replatted. Three lots to be platted into one lot. One lot. Is there a time limit on that? You already have a time limit. 30 days. No, you got to have more than that because we have to have at least 30. Days, whatever number of days they need. Well, how long? 60 days. Is that enough? No, it's, it's not enough. Really about 90 at About least. 90? Give 90. it 90. Okay. Sir, do you understand the motion? Yes, sir. All right. We have a motion to approve, but requiring the three lots, right, Tana? Tanya? Yes. Be replatted into one lot within 90 days from today. Or if 90 days from, uh, let's say uh, that would be September, October, the November meeting. Of the Planning Commission. Of the Planning Commission. Right, okay. Okay. Second. Mr. Johnson seconds. Have any questions? Yes. Can he go ahead and do his building now? Well, if you we could, approve. but you've taken a risk. Let's say you don't get it platted. Let's say for some reason it's denied. Right. I wouldn't do it until you get it platted. Replatted in one lot. We'll can get we, it platted. Can we, can we approve it and require him to put gutter and downspout so that it, if, it, if it doesn't get approved, at least? No. No, because you still got a water problem. Mm -hmm. Have you started building the building yet? Yeah, we started the grading, like you was talking about the water, no. the slope, well, the backyard. Well, you just going to have to, I, my advice would be you just wait until you get it platted. Because if the plat is denied, you got a problem. And the quicker you do it, the better. Right. Okay. Okay. What's All right. But as I saw it. We have a motion to approve subject to replatting the three lots into one lot within the next 90 days. Okay? Okay. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. All in favor of the motion, raise your hand. It's carries. If you have a question about what we just did, Ms. Ingram can help you. Okay. Okay? Yes. A replat of those three lots, are you the owner of the of three lots? No, sir. Well, then the owner of the three lots may have a problem with doing it. He may not want to replant it into one, into one lot. Okay? But if he would have to before he didn't do anything that's else. That's correct. One thing he that. might not understand is the different board votes for that plan. Oh, yeah. It's not this board. It's the Planning Commission board. So, so, so we would have to go to another board also? Yes, sir. Now, where you can solve this is move the building away from the property lines and resubmit it and not put it in that location. But see, the thing is, like, like we was telling you, uh, it's an existing building that was there already, and we were just upgrading it. Doesn't it's matter. Once you tore that building down, you're starting over. Start over. You are going to actually tear the building that is in existence down to replace it? Just to replace the walls and the ceilings oh, and the roof. Okay, the I foundation thought, is still there. I th that's what I thought. I thought the foundation was still there and there was going to be an addition yeah. or well, extending to at the back. We've already approved the motion. You got it, Tanya? Okay. okay. And if I can she be of any assistance, let me know. Okay. Tanya can explain it to you if you need it further. Yeah. Item number four is presented by Fran Francis McGowan, representing Service Dogs of Alabama, requesting a special exception to operate a nonprofit organization and lodging on the property located at 8365 Mobile Highway in an Ag One zoning district. How are you, Francis? I'm doing great. How are y'all? Good. Um, Service Dogs Alabama is a nonprofit organization that trains dogs for children with disabilities, veterans with disabilities active adults with disabilities, and also we have a contract with the State Department of Education to train school dog, school intervention dogs to be placed all over the state for their schools, systems. 
Um, we have been accepted by the um, Assistance Dogs International Organization along with the Veterans International Organization. Both are organizations that hold us accountable for the way that we train and place dogs and conti offer continual training. One of the stipulations with veterans particularly is that we have to house them when they come in to get their dogs because they have to come for five to ten days to train with their dog before they can actually take it away to start working. Because of these requirements and because we would like to order, I mean, we would like to have free lodging for our children's families and our veterans so that we don't pose any hardship on them while they're coming for training with their dogs. Uh, we would like to build these small pods. Is it, did you see them? Okay, it's a, it's a U shape right now. We aren't exactly positive of the configuration, but it'll be something like that in that area of the property. We have 43 acres that we are using exclusively for um, dog training and veterans and dog care, breeding, uh, everything that goes along with it. But uh, we have people there for training all the time, and we want to offer this to our families. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I got a couple of questions for yes. you. So there are 12 individual pods or no, cabins? They're, they're, yeah. They're, you know, they don't have kitchens in them. They're small. They're only 420 square feet apiece. Uh, but they have a dog fenced-in area. We have two extra pods in that picture. Right now, we are only planning on and have financing for 10 pods. So we have to have, we're probably going to have one additional pod as a common area for the families to be able to do laundry with larger refrigerators, stoves, and common eating area for them because we will be supplying them with all their food as well as their lodging when they're there working with us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you charge rent for these? No. No rental? No. Okay. Needed to ask you that question. And what's the typical duration of the stay? The, the t well, facility dogs, there are lots of different types of dogs that we're training. And we invite, like, all of the school system, the educators, the principals, people who are getting facility dogs. Montgomery Police Department just got one. Um, they all come at one time so that they're training. We offer lectures. We offer uh, therapeutic sessions, how to work with the dogs, and then the actual training with the dogs so that they're bonding with that person. Theirs would last five days. If we're doing veterans, we're required that theirs last seven to 10 days offering therapeutic benefits as well. So each type of dog, seizure alert dogs, diabetic alert dogs, when you have the um, same type of disabilities together, then you can focus all of your therapy toward that group. And then they also form, our, our program is so wonderful. <laughs> um, we also, even them coming and having that uh, support system of each other, they keep in touch with each other. They come back for reunions. And we can offer them to come back for reunions and stay there and work together. We're partnering with a couple of other organizations in uh, this area for veterans as well that offers fishing trips and excursions, but they can do it out of our, our center. So just trying to help. Okay. Any questions, board members? Yes. The people that stay there, where do they eat? Well, that's why I said we have kitchens. We have a house already that has a kitchen with big tables in it. Uh -huh. When they came, we just had a graduation training and weekend. And we bring in uh, we bring in all the food and serve them, set okay. up tables, and they eat in the big dining area in the training center. You feed them three meals a day there. Well, we feed them um, we feed them dinner, and then we have available to them sandwich sandwich materials and um, frozen breakfast items that they can have and stuff like that so a lot of them choose to go out you know and do different things too because they're there with their families okay do you have is one of these buildings that's already there is that a classroom do you have a classroom or is it all done outside no no it, we have no we have uh 
one building on the property, there were two buildings that were existing when we purchased the place. And the one large house has bedrooms upstairs, offices downstairs, it has a huge kitchen with double ovens, and it has a dining area or a board meeting area and a big living room with big screen TVs. And then we have a second building that was simply a garage with an upstairs storage area, which we converted to an apartment with offices downstairs and a workshop, and our kennel manager lives on site. Okay. So we have those buildings, and then since we have been there in the last four years, we have built state-of-the-art kennels and breeding facilities that are air-conditioned, heated, and even our dogs get big screen TVs. <laughs> and then um, next door to that, we have a big open building that is a training center where people, where we work dogs every day. And then during the transition periods when the people come to stay with us or come to training, then they work in there. And they, we have a presentation area, we have a kitchen in there, we have bathrooms, refrigerators, so that's all stocked with drinks and w whatever. Okay, so this is just about the pods, is that right? This is just about the pods. Okay, thank you. Do, do y'all need volunteers? Pardon me? Do y'all need volunteers? We always need volunteers. <laughs> you know, you're welcome to come. We train our diabetic alert dogs early in the mornings, and we always have puppies out there that are working. They're coming. We train in a prison in Florida. So the dogs go, and then we have other kennels in North Alabama. So they're always moved between the three facilities depending on their level of training and what they're being trained for. But yes, and everybody's invited to come out anytime. Do you have a card you can leave with me before you leave? I might in All my right. purse. Right. <laughs> May I say we appreciate what you're doing? Pardon me? May I say we appreciate what you're doing? Very blessed that I get to do it. You're a great service. Thank you. Any other questions? In one second. Any one of the audits care to address this item? Now, I don't want to turn them up. Have a motion to approve from Ms. Brown to have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Holmes. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Stanley. Yes. Items number five and six chose to delay until next month until there's more members here. Five and six. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Item seven is presented by Josh Husted. Mr. Husted here. Mr. Husted, item seven, not here. We'll delay that to next month. Item eight is presented by Aaron Bush, requesting a special exception for a mobile home for living purposes to be located at 9630 U.S. Highway 31 in an Ag 1 zoning district. All right. Mr. Uh, Bush? Gonna, how are y'all doing? You're, you're Mr. Aaron Bush? Yes. Okay, Mr. Bush. Uh, it's good to have a little vacation from the heat. Um, pretty simple uh, uh, request. I would like to have a home here to live in. Uh, I've lived on this property about 20 years. Uh, as you can see from the picture, a mobile home is in keeping with the local vernacular architecture. Um, if you have any concerns, please ask. What is the building in the lower left corner? That is a hoop house. I am an organic, uh, well, not 100% organic farmer. Uh, I raise produce. Okay. Nobody's living there, correct? No. Okay. No. Uh, in fact, I had to sign a, a covenant with the property saying I would not subdivide it when I had my uh, sewage system installed. Correct. Okay. Uh, and you're going to be uh, several hundred feet off of U.S. Highway 31? Uh, yes. Do you have an uh, idea approximately how far back? Uh, it's uh, approximately 200, 300 foot back. At least, let's just say at least 200 feet? Yes. Okay. All right. Any questions, board members? Yes. You said you've lived here for 20 years? Uh, yeah. The, uh, 
plat of land. Um, it was part of a 110 acre plot that was bought by my grandfather. Uh, and when my father retired from the military, he moved back to this property. And uh, over the past 20 years, I've lived uh, on the property and ran my farm from this area. Okay, I just, I don't see any other place. I don't see where you lived. If you uh, go back to the, um, uh, there's uh, this plat, you see the, the one that has the AGR-1 on top of it. There's a large house there that my mom and dad lived in. Okay, gotcha, thank you. Any other questions? Anyone in the audience care to address this item? I'll entertain a motion. Have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Howell seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor? Please raise your hand. Motion carries. Y'all have a great afternoon. Thank you. Good luck. Sir. Thank you. Did we miss anybody? Okay. We're glad to have y'all. I have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Minutes approved. Second by Mr. Howell. Amen. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor adjourning the meeting say aye. Aye.